Randall, with your ear, can you identify that voice? Charlton Heston. Very, you never miss. What a treat. Look what I have here. Uh, we could go on the road and do um, Blythe Spirit. <laughs> uh, no, that's not the name of it. Uh, but I, I'm not even going to tell you if you don't know what these two guys are known for. And it's a pain in a way because they also are distinguished careers totally other from, let's say, the odd couple. Uh, the reason he's doing this, things, when he introduced me, he said, Quincy and the odd couple. Like I'd done nothing else, no theater, nothing. But see, you had told me how dumb people are, and I had to name the two best known he's things. He's lying, I said that afterwards. Your Honor, he's lying. Ah, oh, yeah, but I can see into the future. <laughs> what card are you thinking of? No, it doesn't work that way. Tony. Uh, 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 Jack of Hearts. A, a form... God, he's right. You will never know what you have just done. Do you have any idea why you said that? Yes. <laughs> you said, what card are you thinking of? To him, yeah. but I answered for him, because I knew that's what he was thinking. I was thinking of the Jack of Hearts. No, no. I, now, is there any way under God's heaven that I can prove this? Have, no. That's called the... Uh, We're all lying. Do I look like I'm acting? Yes. Jack Klugman, if you missed uh, last night, was fascinating and infuriating, uh, both, on the subject of his uh, vocal band's operation, learn, partial laryngectomy, I guess is what it's called. Uh, partly because there was one highfalutin doctor, one of the best in his field, who misadvised you. Insisted that I did. You know I'm a total... No, I'm not a certain name. Oh, why not? No. Have you no decency? <laughs> retired. Think of the people you... He wasn't say. retired. You know what killed me in the profession, medical profession? They say, I ask about a doctor, they say, well, between us, I wouldn't send my dog to him. Between us? What kind of ethics is that? If I go to a bad, you go to a bad tailor, yeah. say, don't go there. He makes lousy pants. What's... I know, that's mean? like saying... But a guy can kill you. Cookies I left in the cupboard are poison. I wouldn't eat any of them if I were. It's the same sort of thing. Isn't it maddening? I went to the doctor and said, uh, I've got this congestion <coughs> I don't know if I've got a just an allergy or if I've got a cold he said well what do you think it is <laughs> <laughs> and you showed him your degree <laughs> how you feeling doc <laughs> how long have you had that mole on your forehead <laughs> hey, I stayed here only long enough oh. to welcome my dear friend who I'll see later in the week and tell you how much I love him and nice seeing you again. wait a minute I gotta get out of here what is it you or Lloyd Bridges is doing that thing for kids? I'm doing Shining Time Station. It's on the 12th of April. He confuses me with Lloyd Bridges. Everyone does. I know. We look alike. We have the same hair. We have the same children. You're kidding me. Nobody's we kidding. have the same children. How can anybody confuse you with the same children? <laughs> Get out of here. Make a fortune. <laughs> you and your horses. Yeah. Mind the step. I'm not a, my voice, not my leg. Jack Klugman, ladies and gentlemen. Let's hear it. Isn't that something? We've got 400 people here, and that's all they can applaud. Like, a remarkable fellow. Herr Randall, He's to whom do you turn? Part of a lion, Klugman. Yeah, to put himself through this. I didn't get to ask him about uh, the depression that must have set in, whether exogenous or endogenous. I learned one of those words from you. Uh, but uh, when he knew that clearly his career was over, happily it wasn't. How, did you help him get through that time a little? People say I did. I'm given credit for it. Has yeah. not an ounce of truth in it. Yeah. His character is uh, formidable. Nothing can Could stop Could you handle it that well, do you think? No. No, I don't have his strength. Yeah. I have that feeling, too. About myself, I mean, not you. Um, and yet there's a heroicism that comes in people who don't think who don't think they have it sometimes when they face some ghastly illness or heroicism he came heroism. back heroism sorry god when a math no i like heroism language. but he uh it, it took such courage to get back on the stage god. and his voice was very raspy but strong and he came back in and um we did three men on a horse yeah and uh, most people saluted his valor but uh one reviewer attacked him for going on the stage with after he'd had cancer 
What did they think he was going to do, expose the audience to it? How dare he get out there with a sound like that? Instead of saying, the courage in that he's come back and that he's licked it. And yeah. he's out there on stage carrying a show eight times a week. What, 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 what a bull he is. What that a was strong man. Who was the little piss ant who said that? No, I'd rather not say. He's still writing. But, uh... That for New York Magazine, I hope. No. no. But, uh, for the New York Times. And, uh... Oh, well. It was, um... Hideous. That's remarkable, Hideous. though, because you'd think... Writers forget that, that the individual they're writing about does read it, and so do their relatives and friends. And I remember Kenneth Tynan saying once, the critic, I, sometimes I just sit down and I say, I'm going to lose a friend now, because I have to be honest about her Juliet or whatever. That's a different thing. But that seems almost... It's unbelievable. Brutality. Yes. Well, Klugman's a better man than he is. Listen, to whom do you turn to laugh when you want to, when, for reading? Remember the days when there was a lot of printed, reading, hilarious... Uh, How often have you I want to sound like an old read fart. something and, um, and laughed out loud reading? Dave Barry. Mm. Did you ever read A Photographer's Day Out by no. Lewis Carroll? No. Tears <laughs> pouring down. Really? Laughter. Yes, yes. There's another thing I can read every year and laugh out loud, and that's an, a Mark Twain essay called Fenimore Cooper's Literary Offenses. And it should be required reading for every human on this earth in case a bus ever hits them. <laughs> and you learn more about writing in it while laughing like hell. Do we have to take a break? Oh, we've got some hot stuff for you in the next segment. I just got to get up my nerve to ask it. We'll be right back. <laughs> Oh, you got us straightening our hair, assuming it is our hair. Um, with I'm sitting here with uh, Tony Randall, of course. If I weren't, we wouldn't be able to hear each other, would we? Uh, I was asking you who, who makes you laugh, um, and you talked about Tristram Shandy and... Uh, so, Sid Perlman, but, but, S.J. Perlman. S.J. Perlman, and, and during the break we were saying there's a whole generation that doesn't even recognize the names of this great treasury of American humor, w wits. People who make you laugh out loud when, when you read them. And to me, Dave Barry, I think it was Marshall Brickman who observed that with a very limited vocabulary, I mean, not a, a extra lapidary kind of thing, he makes you laugh out loud constantly. I, uh, I was paid a small amount of money to record a book uh, put together by... The fellow who writes funny stuff in the Times, what's his name? Russell Baker? Yes, I block on names, incidentally. And he had chosen a, a crestomathy of uh, funny stuff. And one passage in one excerpt made me laugh so hard every time that I couldn't, uh, I couldn't record it. I kept breaking <laughs> up. And, and, uh, People get suspicious after the fourth time. Yeah, but I could not get through it. It was so funny. <laughs> what was it? And I don't remember. Oh, that's great. I don't remember the name of the fellow who wrote it. But it was... Uh, oh, what do you think? Can you remember anything of it? Yes, it was something about uh, Eisenhower. Uh, I don't really remember... Uh, what, I what, think I know what it was. Was it the Gettysburg Address in Eisenhower's? No, no. It, that's in an anthology of humor. No, it was, uh, Eisenhower had uh, some platform built to make his inaugural speech on, and this fellow had the idea of buying that platform and cutting it up in little pieces, and he could sell them. <laughs> that's funny to begin with. And he, his, his, uh, yes, his marketing ideas on selling these pieces was his hysterically funny. I expect his wife had to say a history of some other brilliant ideas. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, you could do that with a few individuals in the world. I'm not sure Ike would be necessarily one of them. There are people in this world who would pay to touch something Madonna has touched. Mm. Or do it for free. <laughs> <laughs> you anticipated my thought. I, I saw your I saw your thought. I, there, there's no way in this bloody world that I can ever convince you of how stunned and, and 
scared I am a little bit by your Jack of Hearts thing. Uh, if you want, I will call two friends of mine. And they'll say, if you say to them, I named a card. Mm -hmm. Dick took on a great deal about it. What card would that be? They'll say the Jack of Hearts. This is astounding. You, I, I don't know. You might have just, you know, the odds are 52, 51 to. Two. Oh, I can understand it perfectly. Yeah. Jack was sitting here. Jack. Oh, I see. Jack Klugman was sitting. He has here. a lot of heart, and he's all heart. What else could you say? That's right. What if um, the late Ella Fitzgerald? Would you have said the Queen of Clubs? <laughs> she played nightclubs. <laughs> That's good. That was good. Can you imagine what I almost said? Yeah. Lord, wouldn't want to have to face F. Lee Bailey. No, or if uh, Mr. Oppenheimer were here. Oh, you're too fast for me now. What? King of Diamonds. Oh, okay. <laughs> do you suppose Mr. De Beers. Do you suppose there's one person still watching this? <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, do you feel, uh, feel that uh, in the main, that men in general, or at least gentlemen, um, prefer blondes. Well, I don't even know where that saying comes from. In Japan, they'll say, you have a girlfriend? Yes. Brond? Ha. Ah. But I don't know where the, the, the saying comes from. I it comes not, from Anita Luce. I hope you're not here to plug Call Me Madam. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Go ahead. Anita Luce invented that legend. And I think life has sought to verify it. Ah, I noticed the disparaging way the defense said to the nice, most believable policeman in the O.J. trial, who said, this is sad, O.J., why don't you tell the truth? They said to him, you were in a jacuzzi with a blonde. Now, they never say you were in a jacuzzi with a brunette or with a, mm. or with a blonde. What's wrong? Yeah, I'm out of my depth here. I'm the only person in America who has not paid one second of attention to this trial. Yeah, you are then, probably. Yes. But then you've always been unique, or as people say, very unique. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I just, I, I, it's just an article with me that I, I will not, I will not uh, submit mm -hmm. to this lurid, vile, awful stuff. Well, let me try to demonstrate what a stuffy... No, let's talk about gentlemen prefer blonde. Well, I was going to say, point out what a stuffy old fart you must be then yes. to do that, because the fact is it has, it has murder, it has money, it has celebrity, it has suspense, it has deception, it has war, it has conflict, it has logic, it has You're leaving intrigue. out one big thing. you got to have heart. Racism. And, oh, racism, I was going to get to that yeah. as soon as I thought of it. I just despise all of it. Uh -huh. and, uh, but I, 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 I can tell you that it is fabulous. I it, know, Entertainment, I know. Oh, it, as though we forget that two it people were to the words to this, and I, brutally I, slaughtered. Yes. Yeah. I'm unbearable, I know that. But you're no stranger to such things. You've been in the armed services. You've been... You were there when the bombs were dropping. <laughs> Still, I won't sully my mind with this filth. Okay. All then. right. So those of us who will are beneath contempt. I'd like we? to talk about Gentleman Fur <laughs> <laughs> which is the latest show of the National Actors Theater. Watch but the, I'm having wait a, a minute, tough you, time. Do you have a camera on Tony's face? We're out of time. <laughs> oh, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> hey, Tony, it was nice you could come over. To the I'm sure you were hitchhiking here in New Jersey. Yes, I just wanted to get across the bridge this morning. Drop in and save the show with yeah. Klugman and me because we couldn't think of anything to talk about. Well, we have another segment he'll be glad to know. <laughs> and we'll be back. <laughs> Sorry, Tony Randall. is CNBC. Oh, I was just telling Tony Randall an intimate story of how I first m uh, heard his it's name. It's the sort of thing that, that, that... Between men. <laughs> yes, that, that <laughs> public best not no, know. No, we don't want the public in on this. We can't, we can't start trusting the public. Uh, about gentlemen prefer blondes, Dick. Yeah, I was just going to bring it up. It was on the tip of my tongue. It's quite a musical. Anita Luce, is it? Anita Luce 
was really a marvelous writer. Uh, an absolutely marvelous writer. Yeah. Have you read her? I have. Uh, somebody at a ladies' book fair, I picked up a sto book of her uh, stories. She's a writer who can make you laugh out loud. Absolutely. If I tell you that there's a man in in the book, not in the play, named Mount Gins. Mount? Mount Gins. G-I-N-Z? Yes. As the... Uh, as the uh, Battenbergs... Let me guess. Beg yeah, means no. mountain Wait. German. As the Battenbergs became Mount Battens. Ginsburg. <laughs> <laughs> now, is that spelled out, or is it just no. there for those who get it? And it's, no, it's it's no, no, just just there for those who get it. Huh? But she was that funny. <laughs> and it, 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 it's, it's really... That's a gem. Uh, uh, and uh, imagine, that was written in 1925, and you never heard that joke until this minute. Ever, and it's an original. I... Her her stuff is great. In fact, I think there are only two writers who really caught that period. And one's Scott Fitzgerald and The Great Gatsby, and the other is The Great Anita Loose. Yeah, in Gentlemen Prefer Blondes. Did you all know her? I talked to her on the phone. Mm -hmm. She called me up. I don't know why she chose me. I have no idea. She said, I have something I must talk to you about. It's a project I... Uh, when can we meet? And I said, whenever you wish. And she said, uh, well, I'll be in New York next week or whatever, and I'll call you. And uh, I never heard from her again, and she died. She died uh, within a, a month or two of that call. Damn. Of course, I was fascinated that Anita Luce called me. Yeah. Anyway, this marvelous book was made into a play, and a very successful play in the 20s. And then, uh, in the... 50s or 60s, it was made into a smash hit musical. The musical has never been revived. I wonder why. And it's a, I'm in the business of putting on classics. The National Actors Theater yeah, collect, does uh, only classics. This is a true classic. Anita Luz and Julie Stein, those glorious songs. I saw him a week before he died. Mm -hmm. uh, it's funny how you've just seen someone and then... Mm -hmm. Where are they now? That's life, uh, Dick. It's, I mean, here today... No, I'm afraid it's death. In the midst of life, we're in the midst of death. What is you that are. quote? Something like that. Uh, <laughs> Jonathan Miller said his nightmare is to have to take a general knowledge test in public. <laughs> How many senators are there? Uh, but you, uh, you're going to do a rival at NAT, National Actors yes. Theater. We're in previews as we speak. Uh, Lyceum Theater, that, right? 45th and Broadway. But April 10th is... Lyceum? The, Yes. Lyceum, yeah. Lyceum or Lyceum. Either is correct. And you would know. Hmm. It is said that Noah Webster on his deathbed said, I am going to or I am about to die. <laughs> Either is correct. <laughs> is that correct? Oh, I love it's that. Supposed to be, it's supposed to be fact. Oh, that's yeah. a good one for yeah. the pause in a conversation <laughs> or a dull cocktail party. <laughs> You know how you've heard a phrase all your life? I've, now, Sapphire will steal this, and you've never analyzed it. The other day, they said he was such an athlete, he was such a dancer, he, would do, he could do anything. He was truly one of a kind. I said, I thought, that says the opposite of what it means. If he was one of a kind, then he isn't unique. I'm not sure. I don't want to take time away from our discussion. They mean of gentlemen prefer blondes. No, during the intermission of gentlemen prefer blondes, once I heard people saying, "You mean a a kind of a kind? He is the what, only no, one." No, what it means, it's it's a rough translation of an old Latin saying, "Sui generis." Oh, you Harvard guys, sui generis. Yeah, su. E. Sui. Generous, the famous Sui. agent from Hollywood. <laughs> but, uh. Sui generous to a fault, someone in, has said. She'd be good in Gentlemen <laughs> for her Blondes. Now, well, uh, I, we have K.T. Sullivan in Gentlemen for her Blondes. I was going to say, how do you go about casting a classic without the intimidation of the people who preceded and are still in the living memory of those old enough to be tortoises? You have to, um, you have to ignore that. Uh, every one of our plays is is a revival of a classic. Mm. Since since Shakespeare wrote Hamlet, how many great Hamlets have there been? Probably two hundred and fifty. Yes. Right. Uh, but then Toscanini said yeah. tradition 
is the last bad performance. <laughs> yeah. I wouldn't want a lot of lines like that in my nightclub act, but it has a certain uh, thing about it. Let me lay one on no, you. No, no, no. Do your nightclub act and come out and say, Ladies and gentlemen, I got a hot one from Duskanini. He says that tradition is the last bad performance. But speaking of last bad performances, you should have seen us last night. <laughs> I know you're out there. I hear you breathing. Anyway. <laughs> you know, that's a funny, <laughs> a funny idea. A guy who says nightclub act and he gets a lot of the great wits of all time. You know, but they're meant to be read. They're not meant to be said. Can you imagine coming out and saying, um, Hypocrisy is the compliment that vice pays to virtue. Oscar, <laughs> Oscar Wilde's nightclub act. <laughs> I think we got a good idea here. Now, Oscar uh, Wilde had a, had a brother who was a comic, Jackie. And uh, <laughs> Jackie with the snap-on <laughs> tie. Yeah. Jackie Wilde. Uh, Oscar did his act for a while. It was silly to see poor Oscar singing. And that's why I say, when you're smiling at the end, because if you can't get a laugh, every cheap comic bursts into when you're smiling. <laughs> Randall, you're a gem, and if in Japan you'd be a national treasure. Thanks for being here. Thanks, Steve. We're out of time. Uh, well out of it, in fact. Thanks to my guest, Tony Randall. In case you missed his name, Cavett. See you.